Okay, um, I think we are live and broadcasting. So welcome everyone to this webinar at the Bath Digital Festival. We're really pleased to host this discussion about how to find funding in a global crisis. So thank you to all the sponsors of the festival and to the event organizer, Becky Rock Evans. I'm Ria Hopkinson. I'm the head of content and marketing at the alternative lender Boost & Co. And I'm joined today by Lottie Borum, who's our digital communications executive. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask our panelists, please do feel free to type them into the Q&A box that you can see on your screen. Lottie's going to keep track of the questions throughout and then we'll hand over to her for a Q&A towards the end of the session. Uh, but on the technical front, I believe we have everyone on mute to reduce background noise, although I'm sure you're all used to hearing dogs and doorbells by now. And I do also need to let you know that we're recording this webinar today. Um, it will be available on YouTube, I believe, later. So if you know anyone who's interested in the topic but couldn't make it today, they will have a chance to catch up later. So without further ado, I am delighted to announce our three experts today. Um, we have a lender, an advisor and a business leader who can all tell us what to do next if you have a growing business that needs funding. It's obviously a difficult time at the moment, but we're going to give you practical tips and we are going to be optimistic. So first off, we are joined by Lauren Couch, who has just been appointed the Managing Director of the Growth Lending Group. Congratulations, Lauren. Um, Lauren set up the Southwest office of Boost & Co and she has 17 years of experience in the financial industry. Mark Hod Hodgkins is a chartered accountant and a former partner with Grant Thornton and EY. He joined the board of Encilica, which is a leading fabulous ACIC design and supply company as its chairman in 2016. Uh, Mark has 40 years experience of fundraising and that covers debt, private equity and IPO. And Colin Burns is a funding advisor at Short & Co, which is one of the largest corporate finance advisory teams in the Southwest. Colin has more than 30 years experience working for organizations, including Bank of Scotland and Lloyds Banking Group and he offers funding advice to growing SMEs in a range of sectors. So let's start with some thoughts from you all on the unprecedented situation we find ourselves in. Some business owners may find the concept of taking on debt during a crisis a little bit daunting, but um, are there reasons you think that now could be a good time to look for funding? Lauren, do you wanna kick us off? Hi, thanks, Ria. Um, I think it's, worth looking at funding because the what's happening at the moment is there's opportunities in different markets there's a couple of opportunities maybe to look at acquiring other businesses um, there's also opportunities in taking advantage of the you know what's happening at the moment regarding new opportunities so for instance we've got people that have you know on a very basic level have gone to you know make hand sanitizer or it can be something different like pivoting your existing business. So although it can be daunting to think, well, let's take on funding at the moment, it actually might be the right time to take advantage of some of these opportunities that don't normally arise in the sort of main course of business. Mm -hmm. I'll hand over to Colin on, yeah. on that. I'll, 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 I'll chip in, Lauren, thanks. Um, you know, I'd certainly I'd agree with that. Uh, also, Given what's, what's been on in the past sort of six, eight, eight months, um, there's a lot of businesses out there that have had some sort of issues as well, cash flow holes and, and then turns and profits and turnover and all the rest of it. And as long as as long as there's a way out of it, it's now I suppose a good time to have a look at putting some money in place, really just to sort of protect against that sort of downturn as well. It's a bit of a buffer for the business. So yeah, there's there's positive, there's there's growth there, but there is a, a, another side of the equation given the, um, the pandemic we're in. So, but the, the, the thing I suppose what I'm trying to come from here is if you're actually looking at money to, to fill a gap, if it gets you to a stage the, the business is a lot stronger in six months' time because you've overcome that particular challenge, then again, you're also in a good position sort of to grow the business and make acquisitions. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's a lot of businesses out there that, that have got some issues opportunities will present themselves um, and actually in the it, it makes absolute sense to, to, to look at both on acquisitions and, and just organic growth and, and, and these things generally need funded so there's a number of reasons why even, even the coronavirus um, kicking off as it is to actually have, have a look at your own business model see where you can take it 
Um, and there's funders out there that, that will help you. Yeah. If I could add, um, I think Colin's right. Uh, you should always be looking at the funding for your business, no matter where you are in the economic cycle. There's clearly a lot of drivers at the moment for looking for funding as a consequence of COVID. But there's also great opportunity for funding because as, as, well, as Boost demonstrate, uh, there's a lot of disruptive lenders in the market at the present time, and they have a different attitude to lending than they, they than bankers used to have from traditional banks. So I think it's a good time to be looking for new ways to, uh, to, to raise funds, whether it's through debt or, or equity. I just think there's so many more providers in the marketplace that this is a good time to look. And as Lauren said, there's some good opportunities out there, whether it be a startup or, or um, acquisition. Mark, what would you advise um, companies to do as a first step? Would you say start looking at those smaller alternative different lenders that they maybe haven't considered before, before they go to the banks? It depends where you are. I mean, I think everyone should be looking at funding all the time. Um, in my businesses that I work with, we have a 13-week cash flow forecast, a one-year cash flow forecast, and a three-year cash flow forecast. So you should always be looking at, at, at the at the issue of funding because you should always be thinking about the future of your business but right now if if, if you're starting to look for funding today um the first thing to do is you've got you've got to look to your relationships i think um and, and most people will go to their banker normally although it's my experience that you don't get the same relationship from a banker that you used to get and um I, I, and you don't get a lot of time from them uh, and and i think that's where people like colin come in handy um, you know, they have got relationships that you wouldn't have. So I think the first step is to get to your relationships um, and, and to talk to people who and, and develop relationships and talk to people in the funding uh, side of, of industry, whether it be a, a boost and co or, or a bank of some sort or even an equity lender. You, you should try and keep those uh, relationships going all the time, really, uh, constantly. And Colin, so if somebody came to you and said, we're, we're looking for funding, give us some advice, where would you start with them in this, in this <sighs> current climate? Uh, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, <clears throat> where, would you, where would you start? Well, you, you have to explore what, what their objectives are, first and foremost. You need to understand what, what, what they want. Um, and it's interesting what Mark said earlier on about banks. Um, the banks have changed hugely since, this in the, since the 90s. Uh, in the, the bank was historically the, the place to go for it's a one-stop shop. Um, it's no longer that, you know. Um, sort of put that into perspective. You even start the, the, the coronavirus and, and the launch of that. I don't want to talk about C-bills or anything like that, or civils or whatever you want to call them. But if you look at the start of the pandemic, there was 40 accredited lenders on the British Business Bank's website. There's now over 100. So that, that just goes to show you that the, the extent of the, the sort of the funding opportunities that are out there. Now, a lot of those, to be fair, are, are maybe regional regional players and may just be pure asset back lenders, they may just do invoice discounting asset finance, they may have limitations on what they want to do. But actually, there's, there's a lot, there's, there's, there's a number of business, there's a number of companies out there and lenders out there, just like Boost, that will, will take a different perspective on, 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 on funding, um, as, as the banks used to do in the 90s. So when you're looking at sort of cash flow lending, um, and this is this is normally where where we get involved because there's there's lots of people out there that, that do just uh, do asset back lending. Uh, so when it comes to cash flow lending, it, it, it's important to understand what, what the objectives of the business are, um, how much they're looking for, and get a feel for their financials really, and see what what capacity you think they've actually got to borrow. And what's the objective of that? And then it's about going out and, and having a look at the market and seeing, seeing who's, 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 who's keen to sort of play in that arena. Um, but there's a lot more of them now than, than there were. Um, but even the ones that do the cash flow lending, there's, 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 there's different nuances between each of them. Um, in some will look at leverage, some will look at um, how much cash. Everyone looks at serviceability and affordability. Um, but just in Co, for instance, they, they, they will look key profit business as long as there's a, there's a track to profits and, and it's, there's some certainty there so there's, there's a whole whole range of sort of funders out there 
So anyone that's wanting to try and um, look for funding, I think the, the first thing is to understand who you plan going with it uh, and what the sort of capacity is, and then trying to match that up with the, with the right funders in the market. Really. Lauren, as someone who works for alternative lenders, what happens if somebody is rejected by their bank? We've talked about how they're, they're not the kind of lenders they were before. So if someone's turned down, what, what would you do if they came to you? I think, um, first of all, I, I wouldn't get disheartened. I think it's really important to understand the reasons why the, um, the, the business has been turned down. Now, it, if it's to do with the bank's appetite, or where a business is in their life cycle, life cycle of their business. So for instance, banks, you know, are fantastic for sort of more mature businesses with assets. Um, and for that sort of, that sort of um, covenant, they are always going to be the cheapest. Um, but if you're earlier in your life cycle, so if you're a startup or, you know, you're pre-profit, as Colin said, I think it's, um, it's definitely, you know, if, if you get turned down from your bank, I wouldn't be disheartened. So I suppose it's then just investigating, you know, what else is available to you. So just thinking more broadly and getting advice from people like Shaw & Co, from brokers, you know, people that have done it previously like Mark, but making sure that you um, investigate fully the options for your business. So it can be, you might want to go down the equity route. Certainly, even for someone like myself who worked in, you know, a high street bank for, for 16 years, I'd never heard of venture debt, which is what Boost do, um, which is sort of difference, but, you know, different between a, a, a debt provider and an, an equity, but sort of somewhere in between, you know, it could be, you know, that you look at invoice finance or, uh, you know, so some of the alternative products that we can see in the market now, sort of RCF and, and, and just actually say what, are, is the requirement for the business how can, you know what options are there available to fund that and then actually just go and speak to people and investigate I think the great thing about um what's happening at the moment because you have to take positives from it is people that you haven't been able to get hold of previously are all online sat at their desks in their house so people that you know that you couldn't speak to before lenders that are difficult to get hold of because they're in the car or whatever and now sort of available online so it's just to 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 speak to as many people as possible explain your business explain what you require and then see what options are available to you and what suits you the best rather than you know say if someone says to you I can lend you the money at x don't think that that's automatically the best option for you just investigate can I, can I just add there I think um I think it's widely sort of recognised that the the high street banks, their credit appetite has shrank substantially in the past, well, since probably since about 2007, 2008. So with, with all these things, when, when the banks back away from a specific sort of segment of lending, it's filled with more, uh, with, with other companies that are prepared to, to I suppose, take that, that sort of level of risk on. Now, it's risk reward, in, in, and you might find that, okay, the, the price that you pay from an alternative lender is maybe twice the price you pay from a high street bank. Um, but but they are, they are, they're sort of, they're, they're, they're capital issues that are different from banks. Um, but the, the key thing is that in, if a bank would have done this 20 years ago, then you probably find there's actually a, a business out there, a lender out there that will do it now. So don't be disheartened. Um, I mean, we've had, well, I suppose in, in Sean, we've had over 600 approaches for, for advice over the past for eight, nine months. Um, and, and the vast majority of those, the vast majority have been turned down by the high street bank. Um, so we, we sort of guide and, and point in the right direction and, and when we can, we'll, we'll, we'll introduce the likes of Lorne or, 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 or other, other lenders to, to, to the company to see, to see if we can sort of address that. So don't think if you've been turned down by the bank, it's, it's, it's you, it's not you, it's, it's probably the bank. Um, but there are, there, are, there are funders out there that will, will, will meet your needs more, more often than not. So just, I think, just take a little bit of comfort in that. Excellent. Have you noticed the same, Mark, that, that it's, it can still be relatively easy to get funding despite the, the situation we're in? I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure I would use the word relatively easy. Um, I, I think it is difficult in this current climate, but, but there is plenty of opportunity 
I think you have to be well prepared. I think you have to be realistic about what what your business needs and what its what its prospects are. Um, but, but to call it easy, I think that would be difficult. But you have to be you have to be determined. Um, we've just done a refinancing in Silica, and we went through three or four uh, different opportunities before uh, we decided on the right one. Um, it, it, it takes time, and and when you're under pressure, um, you know that that's stress inducing. So for, for the individual, it's not it's not easy, but there is plenty of opportunity out there. And that you know, just as as Colin said, the number of people, the number of institutions who are making themselves available to lend has grown remarkably quickly in the last two years, remarkably quickly. And you know, fintech is is a sector in itself that's growing and growing very quickly uh, in terms of the numbers of participants as well as the amount that they can lend and they have a totally different view to the traditional lenders and you just you've got to wear out a lot of shoe leather um if that's a, a way of answering your question i just it's not easy but it can be done it can be done it's interesting that you mentioned the mindset. So, so do you think it's as much psychological as anything? People need to be brave and have the confidence in their sector and in their business, even though times are tough, whether that's because they want to help themselves or the fund grow. I think you do have to be realistic about your, about your own business. I think you have to be realistic about its prospects and how much cash you need, um, because you will get tested by any lender on that. Who, who, whoever they are, because they want to make sure they're lending to a prospect that is going to be good for them as, a, as well as good for you. Um, and, and it is difficult sometimes to be, to be realistic with yourself uh, about your own business, particularly when you're under pressure. Uh, but it is quite important to, to do that. And you will come across to funders, to, to lenders or to investors, you will come across as being far more uh, prepared, reliable uh, and uh, backable if you are realistic. I completely, I, and, and also I think um, the openness and the exchange of information is really important between both parties. And I think sometimes that it's really easy to get frustrated with lenders when they're asking you for information, you just think, oh, I, I don't understand why they want, why they, why they want this, et cetera. I think there's a responsibility of lenders to explain why they're requesting certain information and then the exchange becomes easy. And I think that's, I think it's when you're looking for financing, you just need to be prepared that, that there will be information asked of you, such as having cash flow forecasts and, and having, you know, analysis of your pipeline, et cetera, because the lenders are trying to get to a position where they can help you. So I think having that information prepared is absolutely key and being sort of quite open to share that and discuss that and building trust between both parties. Yeah, yeah I'll just add to that as well, Lord. But when I, when I take a client on, one, one of the key things is to be absolutely transparent with me. You know, I, I want to know what's and all, what all the issues are. Um, because the more you understand, then the more you can help them. Because when, when we pass something to yourselves or, or a bank or whoever it might be, um, they will do their own analysis of, of, of the, the opportunity of the proposal. And if they see gaps and holes in it and, and risks that, that we haven't spoken about, then that, that just that just creates a, a need of uncertainty and, and it makes it difficult. So, so for me, just being absolutely transparent, tell me what your problem is and we'll see if we can fix them for you. It's, it's, it's just about that openness. And I, I find the more open you are, uh, the more engaged you'll get with, with, with lenders. Um, so when we put the reports together, it really is um, what are all the risks in the business? Where, where is it going? And as Matt was talking about earlier on, let's have some realistic cash flows and let, let's be honest about the situation. Um, because that's uh, literally, honestly, is, honestly is the best policy. At least. And, and, and for me, it, it's far, far easier trying to get clients properly funded when, when you've got the, the full picture. Um, so I think that's quite important. And it's worth remembering the best time to start looking for funding is when you don't need it, if you can, um, because uh, you, you're, you're on the front foot uh, and you're not under pressure. And, and, and that makes you present better. It makes you uh, more realistic and rational as well when you're not under pressure. So I would urge anyone uh, who's running a business 
to constantly look at the funding options that they will have, not only in the short term, but the medium term as well. Lauren, you mentioned um, people having all the information ready that you would need to see. I think we've seen with C-bills and some other of the government loan schemes that people just didn't have the information because they weren't expecting to need it. Um, do you think, Mark, that if people are ready to look for funding all the time, that will help them to have all the information ready to go at any point, if they're always on, on their toes ready for it? Uh, in, in the business where I'm CFO, um, we, up we update the forecast and the model every other week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, it's constant. Uh, and we're always talking to potential funders, always. If you go to Silicon Valley and talk to people raising money there, they are in constant funding mode. They never stop. They are always doing it uh, because when it's available, they take it. When it's not available, they've got sufficient in the bank. So it's, it is important. You, you, you just got to be on it all the time. And it's a very, I mean, business moves quicker today than it moved 20 years ago. Um, you know, things can change. Very. Who, 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 who saw COVID-19 a year ago? Uh, and, and look what happened in, in, in March, April and May of this year with, with people running to the equity markets running to their bankers you just needed you need everyone needed cash very quickly and it was the people with good relationships and who were prepared and had their models ready who did best and are doing best yeah it's just about keeping that that dialogue going um simple as that because as mark was saying you know if, if you if you're if you're coming at this um late on uh, with with no relationships there then it, it, it's a difficult place to start from. Whereas if you've had this ongoing dialogue, you might you might talk to Lauren for, for 18 months, but at some point you might suddenly say, well, actually, now, now I need this, I need this sort of um, growth funding. Um, but because you've had that dialogue, it's a far, far, far quicker process because there's more of a knowledge about your business uh, at that point. So it's it's quicker. So yeah, I totally agree. You should, you should talk to funders all the time or, or advisors, as the case may be, um, just so we've got an absolute sort of grasp on, on where you are um, and, and what you're looking for. As I say, the, the more information that funders have, then the, the quicker they can respond and react. So it all comes back to having those great relationships. And, and once you do, what, what options can people look at in, in the region? Lauren, do you want to give us some ideas of what people might be able to get hold of? Well, I suppose, um, again, it... it, it it depends on sort of what stage of your business are at. That there, there, there's uh, some amazing. We're very blessed in the southwest that there's some amazing initiatives. You know, um, certainly, you know, I go to the quarterly investment brief briefings at the end, uh, the engine sheds, what, what, which are obviously done online at the moment, where people, you know, people are looking for angel investment, and you know, there's there's a part there at the end where there's a sort of roundup of people looking for funding funding in the region. So, you know, there, there's, there's sort of that level of support that we're very lucky. There's obviously um, a lot of incubators, you know, there's, there's the likes of Set Squared, et cetera. Um, and there's also some, you know, other tools that I, even I wasn't as familiar with, with until relatively recently, you know, so, some of the work that Innovate UK do, um, you know, having a look at the website of Tech Nation, for example, there's a raft of resources on there about, you know, people you can get into contact with and um, help within the region. You know, we've, we've got the likes of TechSpark here who do some amazing work um, in, in the technology sector. And then obviously if, as your business progresses or, or, you know, certainly in certain, some of the technology um, space where people have got signed contracts, et cetera, and need to fund them, you know, looking for some of the professional advisors, you know, not my, me to plug Colin because he's on here, but, you know, looking for people like Shaw & Co to, who will then give you a broad range of what is available in the market. So then you can look at, is equity available, you know, right for me? Is, you know, do I, can I, you know, do I want to go down sort of the more term loan route? Do I want to do something like a revolving facility? What works best for the business? But I just think, you know, utilising as much of these experts as possible um, is, is key. And you know, and and getting the advice as, as early as you can. So I think we're we're very lucky in just spending some time sort of having a look at some of these websites, and it's amazing the the, the help that's available. That's really encouraging. Not only 
to use your relationships that you already have with people, but just to be able to go on the websites and find a lot of information, read it yourself first and, and go from there. It's good to know that it's out there. Colleen, would you, would you back that up for people to do some research first? Um, yeah, yes, definitely. Do, do your research. Um, and because, as I say, and I keep, maybe this is just the age of me, I don't know. You know I keep sort of harping back to my the, the sort of housing days in the banks in the 90s when you could go out for lunch and things like that. And what, what I can tell you is that if you actually go to your bank, um, and, and because I moved from a bank to a, an advisory role, and I've been doing that for the past few years now, it was an absolute eye opener for me um, because when you're in a bank, you're essentially selling one product. That's all you know. Well, that, that's I suppose that's dumbing it down a little bit. Um, but you are you are basically constrained by what that organisation does. Um, so doing research, seeing what's out there. Um, I say for me, when I joined Sean a couple of years ago, it was, it was an absolute eye opener to what was there, and that, that's that's what really um, got me quite excited about this because you you get to see the breadth of of opportunity, the breadth of, of funders out there. And they all do slightly different things. It's about understanding what, what, what they can do. Now, you know, I don't claim to have a monopoly on debt advisory, far from it. And, and you, you are more than welcome to go and phone up um, Lauren directly or, or anyone else who, who want to phone. But definitely have a look. I mean, have a look at what's out there because it is just, it's changed, it's changed dramatically, not just in the past um, sort of, 10 years, but in the past 10 months. So yeah, it's, it's about it's about looking at these. And some of the, the, the people that, that Lauren mentioned as well, kind of about UK, Techspark, all, all these sort of uh, these organizations, they provide not just financial support, but other types of support as well. So it's about doing your homework, seeing what's there, um, and just having a good look at the market. Uh, and, and yeah, so I would wholeheartedly support um, Doing, doing your research, see what's there, uh, and then again, you know, if you want to talk to lenders directly or talk to advisors um, for, for a bit of additional support, then we're all here to, to help. Fantastic. And I'm sure Mark would back that up as well, given that you want people to be thinking about it all the time. Yeah, I just, you, would, you wouldn't only think about getting a new customer every now and then, would you? You'd be thinking about it all the time. You wouldn't just think about getting a new supplier every now and then if you thought there's a cheaper supplier. You'd be thinking about it all the time. Why wouldn't you be thinking about your funding all the time? You know, it's an aspect of business. That you, it's, it's, you just need it. Um, it's, it's just, I mean, at the end of the day, without money, you can't make your business work. So um, you, should be, you should be on it all the time. Excellent. And just to round off, I wanted to ask um, if you all had a piece of advice that you would give to businesses amid the pandemic? If there's one golden piece of nuggets of information you could give them, what, what would it be? Hang in there and don't give up hope, perhaps? Uh, well, uh, what, 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 what I would say, because the, the one thing I've, I've learned with this pandemic is that um, we have no idea when it's going to end, let's be absolutely honest. Um, this could be with us for uh, a number of years. It could be over next, next spring. Who knows? So what I would suggest is have a plan A, have a plan B, and have a plan C, um, because you really just don't know where this, where this is going to go. So uh, the, the dangers of having just a single plan, um, if that's, if that's your, only, your only option and, and things go on beyond that, then where are you left with? So really have, have multiple plans, if at all possible, I, I would suggest, um, and that's probably... That's, that's my top tip. I would, I would emphasize the need to be realistic with yourself as early as possible. Obviously, everybody wants their own business to succeed and everybody wants it to be well-funded. Um, but we are in difficult times and we don't know what the future is going to be. There's a huge amount of opportunity out there to find funding. Um, so get real, real with yourself and be determined. But I think Colin's uh, advice is good. Have more than one plan. And, and, and you should also have a plan that you hope you never use, which might be what happens if I don't get funding. Um, that's, you know, you should have that in your back pocket. What, what am I gonna do if I can't get funding? There is plenty out there, but not every single business that looks for funding in this current environment is going to find funding. It just isn't gonna happen. There will not be a 100% success rate, however positive we all want to be about the future. There will be some failures. So 
realism, I think, is 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 what I would stress. And 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 get out there, go meet people, and, and you know have your plans and execute them. I hate to say the same thing, but I'm going to say the same thing. Um, <laughs> but I my my view is you know look at your forecasts, sensitize them, sensitize them again, because I think you know making sure that you know what overheads can be cut in the business, what is business critical, having all those plans available and being able to execute them really, really quickly. Where we've seen people being really successful at the moment is where they've been able to react quickly, whether that's pivoting their business to do something different, whether it's focusing on one part of the business and not focusing on the other, whether it's reshaping the way that they do their business, that's where we've seen real success. And there are some people doing amazingly well at the moment because they've been able to make dynamic decisions because they've got the information to hand. So I just think the key to everything, as Mark has said, I wish everybody had the same amount of financial information at their fingertips that Mark's got. And that is the utopia, but having information means you can make informed decisions. And it also makes you very credible to other people when you're talking about your plans. So I think that's key. Fantastic. Wise words from all three of you. Thank you very much. I'm sure that's been really useful for everyone. Uh, Lottie, do we have any questions from our audience? We don't have any questions at the moment. Um, as Ria said at the beginning of the webinar, there is a uh, Q&A uh, box at the bottom. So if anybody did have anything they wanted to ask, please do. Um, while we wait for a couple of minutes, in case you've got any, um, I just highlight that the QR codes on the screen all link to Lauren, Mark and Colin's LinkedIn profiles. So if you did want to connect with them <clears throat> and ask any further questions, you just need to hold your phone camera up to the screen over the QR code and you'll be able to follow it through. I'll just wait in case anybody does have a question, but I think there's nothing at the moment. Yeah. answered everything already <laughs> too comprehensive <laughs> <laughs> yeah if people want to scan through and get in touch then that can be the start of their journey into researching and finding out more about how they can find funding absolutely Excellent. um yes the whole webinar has been recorded um so it'll be up on youtube and we'll also be putting some clips of it um up on all of our social profiles as well so don't worry if you miss the start you'll be able to watch it again no problem at all mm -hmm pass it on to anyone else who missed out who couldn't make it at this time cool. i think that's it ria so i'll just pass back to you okay lovely thank you lottie and um, thank you everyone for attending thank you very much to lauren and mark and colin for all your insight today um, I hope everyone's found it useful. Um, there are lots more insights on Boost & Co's website if you want to have a look there, which is boostandco.com. Or I think Lottie has a QR code that you can also scan to sign up to our newsletter for more insights from there. So thank you again to Vast Digital Festival for hosting us and to all the sponsors. And everyone has a great day. Thank you.